Welcome to another episode of SideBySidePerformance.com TV. In this episode, we're going to cover the Rally on the Rocks, we're going to cover some desert racing, the Pure Side-by-Side -side series, and go over the uh, ISA, the International Side-by-Side -side Association, and what it takes to make your UTV race ready. Next month in May, we head to Moab, Utah for the Rally on the Rocks. The Rally on the Rocks is one of our favorite events of the year. Uh, anytime you can escape to Moab and, and have some fun is it, just a great opportunity. The, the red rocks, the sand, the rock crawling, the, the desert sections really make Moab a great event. And the guys that put on the Rally on the Rocks do a phenomenal job. We're really excited to be a part of the event this year. We are sponsoring the Show and Shine contest. We're giving away over $3,000 in prizes. We're giving away a set of wheels. We're giving away a set of mongrel tires. We're giving away a SSV overhead stereo system. We're giving away PRP seat belts. We're also giving $500 cash away. So if you think you've got the best side-by-side -side UTV out there, make sure you bring it to the show and shine because there's a lot of opportunities to win some great prizes at the Rally on the Rocks this year. In addition, like always, we'll be leading a, uh, a trail ride in Moab, Utah one of the days and as soon as we have more information on that, we'll bring it back to you. For 2013, Side-by-Side -side Performance is proud to sponsor with the Pure Side-by-Side -side Series. Side-by-Side -side Performance will be the presenting sponsor of the race series. This year you'll see five races take place in the California City Desert. The races will range from 200 miles all the way up to 400 miles. If you're looking to do some desert racing, the Pure Side-by-Side -side Series is a great opportunity for you. The series is sanctioned by the ISA, so you've got the traditional Production 1000, Production 850, Production 700, Unlimited 4, Unlimited 2, and Stock Beginner Class. So whether you've got a fully built race car like we have here, or you've got a stock Razor XP, there is a class for you that you can come out and join us. The first race of the Pure Side-by-Side -side Series takes place April 19th and 20th in, in Cal City. This race will be a 200 mile desert race. You'll do four 50 mile loops. The race starts about four o'clock and will run in through the night. Uh, it's guaranteed to be a ball. This weekend, April 6th, we'll head out to California City and do the draw for starting positions and do a recon and check out the course and see what it's like so you don't experience the first time. This year we're also proud to announce that Side by Side Performance will be fielding a car in the race. My son Matt Lasher will get behind the wheel of our Monster Energy Side by Side Performance Kawasaki Terex. Matt's been around desert racing for, for years supporting me when we've been racing in Best in the Desert and now it's an opportunity for him to get in the driver's seat and show us what he's made out of. So come on out to Cal City, root us on and, uh, and have some fun with us racing. One of the big things I wanted to talk today about was the ISA and what it takes to make your UTV race legal. Not everybody has to have a full built race car like this to race in an ISA sanctioned event. If you've got a standard Razor, Razor XP, Kawasaki Terex, Yamaha Rhino, Articat Wildcat, there's a class in the ISA for you so that you can come out and race. And with some very few simple modifications, your car will be race legal and ready to go. We're gonna spend the next few minutes just kind of going over some of the simple basic things you need so that your car will be legal to compete in an ISA event. The first thing I wanna talk about is helmets. To race an ISA, you just need a Snell approved helmet. Something as simple as a typical motocross helmet with goggles on it will suffice, or you can go all the way up to a full blown race helmet. This is a full face helmet that's wired with car to car radio intercom in it. It's blown so that it forces fresh air into you and it's got built in eye protection on it. Either one of these options is completely fine to race in the ISA. Next thing that's mandatory in the ISA is, is fire suits. A lot of guys you'll see run full custom fire suits like this that have all their sponsors logos on it. There's, there's really no need to spend all the money to get started in the ISA on a full blown fire suit. A simple two layer fire suit off the shelf from Simpson, Summit, Jake, something like that you can usually find them for about $100, will be perfectly fine to get you started racing in the ISA. 
Let's talk about a few more of the items that you need to have on your car if you're going to race the ISA. Uh, one of the most important ones is a camel pack. Or if you don't have a camel pack, just make sure there's a couple of bottles in the, of water in the car for you so that if you get stuck out in the desert, you have something to drink. Um, the other thing that's mandatory is a first aid kit. You know, any first aid kit will do. Um, just make sure it has your your typical survival supplies in it so that if there's an emergency, you can bust into the first aid kit. All cars in the ISA that are racing in the desert need to have a rear-facing amber light. Um, it can be as simple as picking up uh, amber light from the truck stop and truck stop and mounting it to the roll cage or you know companies like Vision X and Rigid sell amber LEDs as well that, that are super bright but make sure you have one of these on the rear of your car if you're going to race in the ISA. Horns need to be mounted on the car um, so that if you're coming up on lap traffic or something like that you can hit the horn and, and let somebody know that you're behind them and you're a faster approaching vehicle. Fire extinguishers. It's a good idea to have two fire extinguishers mounted in the car so that in case there's a fire you can get to them. You always want to make sure at least one of them is accessible from the outside of the car and the other fire extinguisher is accessible from while you're inside the car belted in. In case you can't get your belts undone you can buy yourself a little bit more time with a fire extinguisher. If you were to break down in the desert you want to have some way to let the other drivers know that there's a car broke down ahead so a simple trucker's triangle safety triangle mounted in the car um, that you can pull out and set on the course is a simple way to let them know that on it mirrors mirrors are probably one of the most important things that you can have so that you know your surroundings when you take off uh, in the starts and, and know what's going on if there's faster traffic coming up behind. You can mount a set of mirrors on the side, you can have just a rear view mirror, but something that allows you to see behind you so you know what's coming up. A couple other items that need to be on the car as well are a front bumper. All cars need to have a front bumper. The only exception to this would be in the uh, Wildcat. With the tubular front bumper that the Wildcat has, the ISA is ruled that, that that is sufficient on it. A couple last things that you need to have on your car that I don't have on the table here for driver protection are a set of doors and window nets. Uh, a Pro Armor door or a PRP door is perfectly acceptable to race in the ISA. Um, if you're using either of those type of doors, you just need to have some type of secondary device to hold the door shut. Um, you need like a, a hose clamp around the two bars works perfect to keep the door shut on it. That'll work great. Uh, you also need a window net. We want to make sure that if you were to roll over or another car was to come in contact with your car that you can keep all your hands in, and arms inside the car. So a simple set of window nets like you can see on our car here are great. Uh, the rules also do require that the passengers need to have five-point harnesses so that you can be securely fastened in the seat. The factory three-point harnesses aren't acceptable in the ISA. You do need to have a five-point. Um, depending on what class you're racing on, um, it determines whether it needs to be a, a two-inch or a three-inch harness. If you have any questions on any of these rules, you can always visit the ISA's website and download the full rule book for the class that you want to race in. I hope this little segment talking about the ISA and some of the safety items that you need to race helps you guys and we hope to see you out at the, uh, in Cal City at the Pierce Side-by-Side -side Series uh, April 19th and 20th.